The German police bust underground hairdressers. Tupac Shakur is alive and waiting for his unemployment in Kentucky. And the FDA urges manufacturers to make hand sanitizer taste worse. These are the weird stories for Tuesday. This is Weird AF News. I'm your host, Jonesy. This is the only weird news podcast hosted by a comedian on a daily basis. And I think it's the only daily weird news podcast that's running during the pandemic, and I'm happy to do so. I hope you enjoy these stories that I got from across the nation. Let's do it. You're listening to Weird AF News with Jonesy. The German police bust underground hairdressers. Well, you guys know the deal, right? You're, you're stuck in your home. You're alone. You need a haircut. It's been weeks. You look in the mirror. You're like, God, I'm out of shape. My hair's unkempt. It's way too long. I'm never going to get a job after this. I need to get all cleaned up. Who's going to do it, though? I don't trust my wife. I don't trust my husband. I'm certainly not going to let one of my kids take some shears to my precious head. I don't trust anybody with a Flobie even at this point. What are you going to do? Well, for some people, you go look for underground hairdressers. Who'd ever thought, hey, you need a haircut? Follow me. It's like buying drugs. You you follow a guy into an alley behind some secret door under a dumpster. Next thing you know, you're getting an underground secret haircut. The mafia is probably giving haircuts out, I'd imagine. The article says, finding the perfect fringe during these times of confinement may prove to be an expensive gamble. First of all, what the hell is a fringe? Is that what Germans call a haircut? Yes, you're looking very good, helmet. Yes, that's why. Oh, thank you very much, Stuart. I got a nice fringe today. You mean a haircut, you dummy? (laughs) Ha, yes, I mean a haircut. The German police went underground to uncover two makeshift hairdressing salons. Over the weekend, I wonder if the uh, underground German agents went in to get the haircut and then they busted them as soon as they whipped out the si- the scissors. Yes, could you take a little off the back, please? Yes. Now hold it right there, you underground hairdresser. You shall come down to the station and explain yourself. You're run- running an underground hair salon sting ring. <laughs> when the officers arrived at the salons carefully installed in the cellars of two private homes. People were having their hair done, the police said in a statement. Two people were were waiting for a cut or a fringe in Elsenfeld and another in a cellar in Momlingen, according to the German agency DPA, which claims that the salons were professionally equipped. Professionally equipped. You mean they had uh, some shears and... A comb and a chair. <laughs> yes, we, we've busted these underground hair salons. You'd be surprised at the sophisticated level of preparation. They had a chair and a mirror and a comb and scissors. Oh, certainly. They've been building up for this for many years to take advantage of this. People have, in, have opened investigations for non-compliance with lockdown measures, which in Bavaria are among the strictest in Germany. I guess they're very strict under these rules, which were set out in March when confinement began. Leaving your home without, quote, valid reason is actually punishable by a fine of 150 euros. Hair salons there are closed like other businesses. They're considered non-essential. However, they're going to be opening on May 4th in the country as part of a gradual deconfinement. But some people can't wait that long for a haircut. I couldn't. I couldn't wait that long for a haircut. So I had to have a friend cut my hair. Yeah, I did it. I took the risk. And by the way, it came out pretty decent. Better than if I did it myself. I admit, I watched like three YouTube videos of people cutting their hair by themselves. And I thought for a moment that it would be possible for me to do such a thing. Uh, It was risky. I knew that. But I was willing to take that risk. But then I came to my senses after holding a pair of unqualified scissors to to my head, looking in the mirror. I had a second mirror so I could see the back, but I just couldn't follow through with it because I knew I would just screw it up beyond recognition. I didn't even trust myself. It's hard times right now. I don't blame people for going to underground barbers, and I don't see what's wrong with it. I thought it was very strange that hair salons weren't considered essential essential businesses and were shut down. I thought that was odd. It's definitely essential. Gyms essential. Certain essential, what I consider essential businesses were shut down. 
Do you guys agree with that or not? Do you think that the hair salons are non-essential? Uh, and what are you doing to cut your hair? Are you braving it, doing it yourself? Are you putting yourself in the hands of a loved one? It's okay to get a bad haircut right now of all times because, let's admit, even if it's crappy, nobody's going to see it. Tupac Shakur is alive and he's waiting for his unemployment check in Kentucky. All eyes are on Tupac Shakur, who is reportedly alive and well in Kentucky and in search of his unemployment check. During a daily press briefing on Monday afternoon, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir discussed the overwhelming number of un unemployment applications that the state is receiving and how frustrating it can be when, quote, bad apples file for unemployment under fake names, ultimately slowing down the payment process for those in need. The governor used an example of an individual filing for unemployment under the name Tupac Shakur, the name of the legendary rapper who died in 1996. Bashir said, We had somebody apply for unemployment for Tupac Shakur here in Kentucky, and that person may have thought they were being funny. They probably did. They thought they were a real comedian, except for the fact that because of them, because of this Tupac Shakur, we had to go through so many other claims. And guess what? We can't be doing that. We can't be doing that. Can't be giving out unemployment to some fake people like Tupac Shakur. Well, what's the issue here? Apparently, Tupac Malik Shakur is a real person living in Lexington, Kentucky, and he's very hurt and he's embarrassed that his unemployment application isn't being taken seriously by state officials. He's aggravated that the governor went on national TV and, uh, well, local TV <laughs> and made fun of him. Here's a quote from Tupac. I've been struggling for like the last month trying to figure out how to pay these bills. I'm hurt. I'm really embarrassed. And I'm shocked. <laughs> We're shocked, Tupac. We're shocked that you're actually alive still. Give the guy unemployment, though. Come on. According to the media, Shakur, who goes by Malik, is a 46-year-old man from Lexington who worked as a cook at Alfalfa's before they closed their doors in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19. According to the report, Shakur applied for unemployment insurance on March 13th, the first day he was allowed to do so, and then received a monetary determination letter on March 17th. Now Shakur is demanding an apology from the governor for wrongly calling him out on the public broadcast. He needs to apologize, Shakur said, adding that he pays taxes. He has a social, sec social security number like everybody else. He says, that's just my name, Tupac Shakur. <laughs> well, since Tupac called out the governor, the governor, Bashir, actually called him to apologize for the error. Shakur said, I understand he's dealing with a lot and mistakes happen. Uh, what, a, what a bigger fellow Shakur is. I love that. He accepted the governor's apology. Good for you. Because what the governor did was pretty, pretty wrong. But, you know, uh, yeah, the governor's uh, dealing with a lot of crap right now. It's not easy being a governor, especially of a, a state like Kentucky, where your citizens just aren't too bright, you know. And, and I'd imagine they do things like this. They make up names. They they try to scam unemployment. It's Kentucky after all, you know. It's like a dealing with Florida. <laughs> These people, if they can scam unemployment, of course they're going to scam unemployment. They're going to put down that their name is, uh, you know, Biggie Smalls or whatever. They don't care. And, you know, when I first saw the title of this story, I really was praying and hoping that Tupac, Tupac Shakur was actually alive in Kentucky collecting unemployment. I just thought that would be that's a that's a hilarious reality to imagine. You know, Tupac Shakur, there's got to be way more than just this one guy in Kentucky named Tupac Shakur. There's got to be many Tupacs out there. I'd imagine many people were, uh, you know, inspired by Tupac and they named their kid after Tupac. It's a thing, of course. The, and maybe the governor should know this. Maybe uh, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Nonetheless, I'm glad Tupac and the governor were able to patch things up. And hopefully Tupac will get his unemployment check pretty soon. And hopefully he spends this time quarantined to, you know, work on his next album. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> you like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. The FDA urges manufacturers to make hand sanitizer that tastes 
worse. Far too many Americans, many of them children, have been ingesting hand sanitizer and other potentially toxic disinfectants since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. According to the FDA, calls to the National Poison Data System increased almost 80% in March 2020 compared to the same time last year. And to bring those numbers down, they're asking manufacturers to make hand sanitizer a little less appealing to the taste buds. Yeah, could you please? Because they're so delicious. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I find myself being completely unable to resist. You know, I put a little dab on my hands and then I put a few drops right on my tongue. It's just such a delicious little treat in the middle of the afternoon. Some delicious hand sanitizer, right guys? You know how good it tastes. <laughs> so manufacturers, if you could please make it not taste so damn good. I can't resist it. All right. I'm living off the hand sanitizer these days. Ooh, my insides have been disinfected. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I don't know any hand sanitizer that tastes good that is appealing, quote, to the taste buds. What are you talking about? Is there some sort of delicious hand sanitizer that I'm missing out on right now? Some edible hand sanitizer? I don't know, guys. Um, Maybe you could clue me in on what this product is that they're referring to because I don't know any hand sanitizer or disinfected that tastes at all reasonable. (laughs) Not that I've tried any, but... So apparently an advisory uh, released by the FDA on Monday, encourages the makers of hand sanitizer to add denatured alcohol, which tastes very bitter, to their products in order to make children and some adults less likely to ingest them. The FDA noted a case they saw this month in which a 13-year-old drank hand sanitizer that was made by a distillery and packaged in a liquor bottle. The sanitizer was not denatured, the agency claims, and tasted like regular drinking alcohol, not how you'd want it to taste if you want to keep customers safe. Uh, I didn't know there's hand sanitizer that actually tastes like drinking alcohol. That sounds like something I could add to my 7-Up. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a double whammy, guys. It'll clean your hands and uh, taste really good in your, uh, with your tonic. With so many manufacturers popping up to meet demand for sanitizer, the FDA is also sending warning letters to companies who make misleading claims about the effectiveness of their products. For example, one that says it can, quote, protect you from pathogens up to 24 hours or for 10 hand washes. The agency emphasized the importance of proper labeling for both child safety purposes and so that customers don't get a false sense of security from products that over overpromise on their virus-fighting abilities. Uh, the labels could be beneficial in combating the misinformation about sanitizer and other disinfectants, including the suggestion from President Donald Trump last week that they could be injected to fight coronavirus. Hand sanitizers are not proven to treat COVID-19 and, like other products meant for external use, are not for ingestion, inhalation, or intravenous use, the FDA commissioner Stephen Hahn has said. <laughs> yeah, when, when you have your president saying such cockamamie things, you really got to really get these um, the people that know something about it to be out there in the forefront spreading the proper information. So thank you, Stephen Hahn, uh, for telling everybody not to drink. Hand sanitizer. I, I really still want to know this hand sanitizer that tastes like like beer or whatever it is. I, I don't know what's going on here. But there are a lot of home sanitization uh, manufacturers, I'd imagine, these days. Just like people are making masks at home to, to meet the demand, people are making hand sanitizers at home to meet the demand. And it's very hard to control that. And you don't know what they're putting in them. And they can say whatever they want about it. They can say that it cures herpes and uh, autism if they want to, like that church... <laughs> In Florida, that said, the bleach will kill your, kill your uh, brain tumor. I mean, that kind of stuff can happen, and it's hard to get a handle on it if you're the FDA. But hopefully, they're they're, they're appealing to the reasonableness of human beings out there. I hope you guys know that you're not supposed to ingest these things. The problem is when you have kids around. You know, as you know, whether you tell them not to ingest it or not, you can put any damn label you want on it. Kids get a hold of things and they put them in their mouth. They drink things, you know. Uh, yeah, you got to be careful. Like, you know, when you have kids, you can't keep the chemicals at arm's reach. You know, the stuff that's under the sink, you have to put it up on top of the refrigerator or something to keep it. Because the kids will start drinking the bleach or whatever. They will. This is a thing that kids do. So the labeling isn't the solution. You really got to be, a, uh, you know, you got to be on top of things right now as a parent. Because right now we're all. Most of us are surrounding ourselves with as many disinfectants as possible, and so you got to watch out for that stuff. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go uh, have a uh, a Coke and hand sanitizer on ice. If you like podcasts, check out Spotify. You can listen to all your favorite artists and podcasts in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. 
Spotify has a huge selection of podcasts on every topic, including this one that you're listening to right now. And you can easily share what you're listening to with friends on Instagram as well. So download the Spotify app, search for your favorite podcast, and also make sure to follow Weird AF News and never miss an episode. Yes, download Spotify and make your life easier. Hey, weirdos. Thanks again for being part of Weird AF News. Your ear is just as necessary as my mouth. That came out strange. You know what I mean. Without listeners, it's like the tree falls in the woods with no one listening. You see what I'm saying? Please tell a friend about the show. I'm sure there's people out there in your life that could use uh, a little laugh and an alternative to the mainstream news, which is you know, somewhat daunting these days, to say the least. I got a new Patreon I'd like to give a major shout out, shout out to. It's uh, Drinky Crow. Drinky Crow has joined the Patreon. Thank you, Drinky. Drinky Crow, if you don't know, was a cartoon that was on Adult Swim a few years ago, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, please enjoy the extra content, Drinky Crow. I have bonus episodes. I just uploaded one with Dave Neal. We did a whole COVID-19 related bonus episode about an hour long with some coronavirus stories from a few weeks ago that I never did. There's a lot of weird corona stories, and I'm only able to do a few a week. So a lot of them are set aside in the bonus episode bin. They're still hilarious, though. And me and Dave went through them, and he's really funny. So check that out. Patreon.com slash Weird AF News and uh, support the show and get some bonus episodes. Also, I had uh, some donations come in from Allison, Allison Andrew, and uh, Terry Lynn, who sent me uh, a couple of cash donations. And wishing me a happy birthday, which is so sweet. I feel so loved. And it's uh, thanks to you. Thanks to my loyal fans of the show. I so appreciate it. I got two pounds of coffee in the mail, and I can't remember who the hell sent me these two pounds of coffee. They're from Thrasher Coffee, so please message me. Um, I got a lot of messages, and I'm backed up. And when I go back to look for this, whoever sent me this, I just cannot find it. So please reach out to me if you send me this coffee. I've been drinking it. It's apparently four times the caffeine as normal coffee. It has been a godsend for me. Unbelievable. I didn't know coffee could be so damn strong. You know, it's outstanding. On Instagram, I've had some people reach out to me that I want to show some love to before we end. Um, Like Tay in DC uh, says she started listening to Weird AF News a couple of months ago. And now we look forward to Florida Fridays in my house. Well, thank you, Tay. I so appreciate that. We have, uh, who else? We have Carolyn from Minnesota who wrote, uh, already started listening to Weird AF News and it's a thousand times better than NPR. And, uh, Something I can laugh at right now is super important to me, Jonesy. This pandemic has us all a little crazy. Hopefully you're holding up well. Uh, Thank you for giving me a new podcast. I literally just got up to date on all of my others and I needed new ones. I'm always up for recommendations. This is great, by the way. Thank you, Carolyn. And, you know, podcasts right now seem to be in demand more than ever because people have some time on their hands. They're a little bored and they want something to listen to. So please don't hesitate. Recommend Weird AF News. You can really recommend it to anybody, all ages, all walks of life. Well, maybe not all ages, but most ages. <laughs> I feel like this is pretty mainstream, you know. I don't swear too much at all, and I try and keep it clean. And I think anybody can really enjoy this. Um, also, who else? Oh, we had a, a Joy Deer who wishes me a happy birthday. And it's her birthday tomorrow. So I want to wish you, Joy, a happy birthday. She is uh, Joy is a nurse, I believe. And so uh, you got to give some love to nurses, am I right? Um, yeah, because they're really on the front lines right now. They're doing, doing amazing things and they're risking everything for us. And, uh, so I appreciate you, Joy. Thank you so much. Also, Anne Elizabeth from Fort Lauderdale. She says, uh, I wanted to tell you a friend of mine was setting up my Alexa last year when I was in NYC and she asked if I've ever heard of you. I hadn't. She made you part of my wake up spiel. So you play every morning on my Alexa, which was of course how I became uh, which, of course, became more relevant when I moved to Florida. One case in point, the psychic who scammed some lady talking to her dead husband. I can't even re- remember the punchline, but all the crazy Fs do live in Florida. Thank you for your entertainment, Jonesy. I pass you along to everyone. Thank you, Anne Elizabeth from Fort Lauderdale. Look, I got fans in Florida. Who would have thought, you, you know, I, I bash Florida you know, on a weekly basis. So if I get some haters from Florida, I totally understand it. But it seems like the people in Florida have a great sense of humor, which I just love. Also, uh, Liz from Toronto wrote, You're hilarious, Jonesy. My daughter and I look forward to Florida Fridays every week and you crack me up. Saying hello from Toronto. 
thank you so much, Liz from Toronto. And uh, your daughter is, oh, I asked for her daughter's name, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, Liz and Rebecca from Toronto. Big shout out from Weird AF News. Also want to give thanks to Melissa Morales, who sent me a nice happy birthday on Twitter as well. Melissa from Texas. Uh, just some other notes. Uh, I was just on two podcasts that you can listen to, and I talked about the Weird AF News podcast over there, how I got started, and uh, a lot of other things. One is called the Off Stage Podcast, Off Stage, and the other one is called Listen to the Vibes Podcast. So uh, Jordan and Kyle were kind enough to have me on their shows, and uh, I did about an hour on each of their shows, and um, I think it's a pretty good listen. You can learn a little bit about me. I go on a crazy rant about PC culture on Kyle's, so that's actually... <laughs> I vented my frustration uh, about that and um, talked about my comedy career and whatnot. It might be a good listen if you're bored. Check it out. Also, later this week, I want to do a whole episode on coronavirus conspiracies. So if you have a conspiracy theory about the coronavirus, please email that to me. Uh, or you can call the show as well. The email is funnyjones at gmail.com. The phone number is 646-450-2012. On Instagram, I'm, I'm at Funny Jones, at Funny Jones, at Funny Jones on Twitter as well. And on Facebook, it's Comedian Jonesy. Sorry for this long outro, but I just had a lot to get to. Um, I want to thank everybody for listening, and we'll, uh, we'll talk tomorrow.